All right, everybody, when you get, when you buy a house, I'm, this house I have to do a lot of work with. Uh, the other one I had, I bought it brand new and it didn't really need anything fixed. But as like maintenance stuff, I'd get stuff fixed and some things would break down or whatever. Anyways, there was a dishwasher that was in here. Now you have a, I disconnected, turn the water off. The power is still hooked up. I can work with that. Um, this dang thing here is a, it's a valve that, that goes into the washer and there was a union I had to break. I turned the water off, break the union, drain the water out of there. There's a little bit of water. Now, what I want to do is, what I want to put in there is my refrigerator. That thing. Now, it'll fit with enough clearance around that you need for refrigerators, but how am I going to, you know, fix this? How am I going to get that dang copper pipe out of there? Well, it goes into this cabinet and into this cabinet. There is a shutoff that goes up into this T that goes into the hot water. Now, what you want to do is instead of cutting it back on this side in here and capping it, you get more access right here. But there's an easier way to do this. What you want to do is go to the store, get yourself a tubing cutter, and you're going to, you're going to put that on there. And when you use a tubing cutter, go slow because if you squeeze it real hard, It'll actually, this is a small one, it'll get in there, but instead of the bigger ones, I have another bigger one that, you know, tighten it up really slow and then turn it and turn it and turn it and tighten it really slow because if you tighten too much, it'll crimp it and your, your uh, joint will be crimped and it won't take a good seal when you solder it, if you want to solder it. Well, anyways, get yourself one of these, put it on there, tighten it down, twist it, tighten it as you make a couple rounds, keep tightening until it comes off. All right, everybody, I finally got it all out. This thing wasn't even working. It was. It would turn like a, a half a turn and stop. That thing didn't even stop the water pressure. Um, so now what I want to do is go back in there on that one pipe. I don't know if you can see it back in there. And sand it. I want to sand it clean. Uh, I don't know how plumbers do it. I can't stand working in confined space. Just make sure it's Clean. Just take some 100 grit sandpaper, clean it off really as good as you can get it. And now I'm going to need a section of this for my next thing that I want to do. So uh, if, if you were going to use this for a fitting, on the back of the fitting thing you want to ream that out really well and it'll clean it out on a regular big, big uh, pipe cutter. Just take some sandpaper. Clean it up really well. All right, and get yourself some solder, some flux, and this is some solder. You usually can use a brush. I'm just going to use a paper towel. Put it up in there, get it all around there, and do the same with this part. The, the flux makes the solder, it pulls in the solder when you, when you heat it up. And melt it so let me try to get this to the best angle I can it starts to pull it in around the joint That's done. Almost melted my fingers. But that's alright. I'll let that cool off and I'll show you the next step. Okay, everybody. This is we got this all capped off. This is like a backup system because I don't want that thing to leak at all. So I soldered that on and now I sanded this end. And this is called a shark bite to where you don't need any soldering for it anyways. And another one thing about a uh, a valve, let's take this off. This means it's open. If you turn it off, it goes this way. It means st it stops the, the flow of the water. That's a little tidbit for you. So what I want to do is all you have to do with this, no soldering involved. You just push it in, and it's sealed. It's, it's done. That will not leak. That won't come off or anything. So now I just have to push it onto that, and there, on that valve, and then I can just turn it off and I turn the water back on, and it will be totally finished. So just push it in. Yeah. <laughs> 
tight. There. Done. You can actually take those off and reuse those too. So what I'm going to do is turn that off. I'll go down there and turn the water on and that should be watertight. So there you go. The water is on. And even if I turn that on, it's not going to go anywhere the cap's on it, but it's just a fail-safe thing. I'm not a plumber, and I'm just some guy working on his house, and uh, I could have just soldered the cap on there. I could have just used the valve without the cap. That's either way, but the cap, most people will probably do it. I think that valve cost me, what, $13, 14 bucks? Yeah. Something like that. The cap was $0.63. Cents. But it's, it's, it's a fail-safe thing. Now, if I ever want to cap, like cut that off and put a water line in for a washer or a dishwasher, I have it right there. So there you go. That's how you do it. All right, everybody. I ran some uh, a plug over to that thing to plug the refrigerator in. Now I need a piece of wood to fill this all in. And i got to do some measuring from there to here, from here to here, from out there and around and around that cord and all kinds of stuff so so I can put my fridge in there and it'll be nice and a uh, nice little compartment so let's get on with it to stain it to kind of match the covers so let's get some let's get a rag and stain the sucker now it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's really going to see it except for on the sides because I want to reveal around because it's a refrigerator we got to have a, an opening so it doesn't have to be perfect but I want to match a little When you get stain on your fingers, use a little bit of WD-40, it'll take it right off. And there you have it. Looks like a, looks like it fits. Grab yourself a beer. Here you have your bottle opener right here. Thanks for watching.